How to use trigger restrictions in Cloud BCI. Here's today's starting point of a Cloud BCI controller version 2.452.2.4. Now, what are trigger restrictions? Well, let's take a look at the documentation. The link to this documentation is down in the description. And what this feature allows us to do is restrict which upstream jobs are allowed to trigger builds of other jobs inside a specific folder or the entire instance. Restrictions are defined in folders and it's defined using an ant glob. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. Now for our example, we're going to be focusing on the pipeline build step, even though we can handle two different versions for freestyle and also trigger a remote job. But again, we're just gonna look at the build step. Now on my controller, I've already installed the plugin. So let's go and go back over to the controller, manage Jenkins, plugins. We'll go to installed plugins and search for trigger. And we can see, at least with this version, the version of trigger restrictions is 1.11. Now let's go back over to the documentation. First off, we can set up global restrictions. So the global restriction can be set to restrict build triggers in the whole instance. In other words, it affects all the folders that are there. By default, the value is star star slash star. Remember that we were using ant globs. Well, this is the ant glob saying, okay, a request comes in to trigger a job. We're gonna allow it for all controllers. Let's go ahead and verify that this is set up correctly. So we'll go back over into our controller, click on Manage Jenkins, we'll click on System, and then let's search for Trigger. We'll find the section Default Trigger Restrictions, and we see that it's star star slash star. So this matches what our default says in the documentation. But we can also set up restrictions at the folder level to override the global restrictions. So since our global restrictions basically allow everything, what we're going to be doing in our example is we're going to be setting up restrictions at the folder level. We're going to follow this model roughly. So I have a folder one and a folder two, and we're going to set up the restrictions on both of those. So we can see here the global level, star, star, slash, star. My folder one will have folder one, star, star, slash, star. And then my folder two will also have a folder two, star, star, slash, star. So let's go over and take a look at how this is going to work. So if I take a look inside of my folder one, on my left nav, I have a trigger restrictions set on the left nav. Let's click on that. What we can see here is it gives us documentation, but we have a checkbox that says overwrite job trigger restrictions. So this is gonna be overriding the global configuration. So in my case, I'm setting it to folder dash zero one star star slash star. So what this means is the only way that jobs can be triggered inside of folder one are jobs that are inside of folder one. So if we go back over to folder one, if I click on job one and click on build now, what I'm going to see is that we're scheduling a project folder one, job two, it runs and it completes successfully. Well, what is this job defined as? So if I take a look at job one, click on configure, what I have is I'm just building job two. The job two, since I'm not specifying a path, is gonna be the job two within the folder one folder. So we go back over to folder one, we click on job two, we click on configure. What we're doing is just printing out a simple echo hello world and if we take a look at the output of job two, we can see that it was started by the upstream project folder one, job one. So everything worked within this folder. Let's go create a job to try to fire off this job. So if I click on folder two, let's create a new item and let's call it trigger folder one, job two. So inside of folder one, we had a job one triggering job two. We're going to try to trigger it from job two. Go back to pipeline, click okay. Let's go ahead and define this job. So I'm going to start with my hello world. And I know the definition for my job is build. I'm going to say folder dash zero one slash job dash zero two. Let's click on save. Let's verify that I got that name right. So folder one, job dash two. So I messed up. Let's go ahead and fix that. So we'll click on CC2, go back to folder 02. Let's modify this just to be job dash two, no zero. Let's click on save. Now, when we run this job, we're gonna see that the job failed. So let's click into the log. What it says here, we're scheduling the project folder one job two, but here it says we failed to trigger the build of folder zero one job two. So let's go back into our folder one and let's go ahead and turn off our configuration for overriding that trigger. So go to folder one, click on trigger restrictions. We'll uncheck the box and click on save. If I go ahead and go back over to folder two, click on this job, and then click on build now, what we expect to see is that the job completes successfully. So the job starts up, we can see it was started by the user admin, it's scheduling the project folder one job two, now it's starting and completed successfully. But if we go back in again to folder one, 
go back to our trigger restrictions. We'll go ahead and overwrite this again. We'll say folder dash zero one slash star star slash star. Click on save. We'll go back over to our folder two. Let's run this trigger job one more time. And what we'll see again is that the job failed since we put that trigger restriction back in. So we can no longer trigger jobs within folder one from any other place except within folder one. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.